Hi friends, uh, in this video I am going to give you some introduction uh, to electric uh, potential energy or electrostatic potential energy. Before that, I will explain you what is called as conservative force. Take a ball which is at a height h on the earth. Initially it had some potential energy mgh. If it is dropped, uh, when it is in the middle of its journey, some of its potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy. And uh, however, the total energy, the total sum of potential energy and kinetic energy will still be equal to this sum mgh. And when it's it uh, when it hits the earth, the total potential energy gets disappeared and uh, appears as kinetic energy, which is also equal to mgh. What you have to observe here is the total sum of potential energies and kinetic energies at all the points is equal to a constant it's not changing and uh, here it's acted only by gravitational force and if any force uh, if any object follows this uh, law or property whatever you call it as the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy is constant everywhere uh, and uh, if this happens everywhere then you can say that the object is acted by a conservative force so our gravitational force is a conservative force and another example would be a spring force and similarly electrostatic force is also a conservative force and this is not a surprise because electrostatic force in many ways resembles gravitational force if you take a look at uh, these formulas the force due to gravitational force is uh, very much similar to the force due to electrostatic force and uh, you see that only the constants are different and the masses are replaced by charges both are inversely proportional to the distance square so uh, just like gravitational force electrostatic force is also a conservational force now let me tell you what is the definition of potential energy difference it is a work required to be done by an external force in moving a charge from one point to another uh, for a given field for a given ele electric field say you have an electric field this way for now take it is some constant and uh, you have two points here it is uh, let there be p and r if you want to move a charge plus q from here to here uh, say let us apply some external force in this way which is just equal to the uh, electric force in this direction just in opposite direction uh, I said it is just equal to the electric force because if it is more than that the charge gets accelerated that should not happen you should bring the charge very very slowly that's what this means without acceleration actually that should be infinitesimally slow now if we do this action if we perform this action the work done by the external force that would be the force into displacement as you know force external into displacement from r to p and this would be the same as this one because external force is nothing but the opposite of electrical force and uh, this is the work done by the external force uh, note that uh, this this work done by the external force will be stored as the potential energy when the charge is at p and uh, this is what i want to change uh, i want to say the change in potential energy when the charge is at these two places p and r and this gets stored as the potential energy difference let me tell you something important here the actually this is the fundamental characteristic of any conservative force uh, what I mean to say is that if you bring the charge from R to P whether in, uh, in this direction or in this direction or in this direction it really doesn't matter finally the change in the potential energy will be the same uh, that's what is the meaning of path independence and uh, there's one more comment I would like to make it is the potential energy difference that is significant not the actual potential energy everywhere say if the potential energy at uh, point R was uh, P 
P1 and that P was P2 and the potential energy difference would be say delta P which is nothing but P2 minus P1. You might as well say the potential energy at P was uh, P2 plus C and at R was P1 plus C. You can add this constant everywhere and still the difference in potential energy would be constant. Uh, it would be the same P2 minus P1 because the constants get cancelled and therefore it is the potential energy difference that is significant. It really doesn't matter what our constant you add. Um, so let us follow a convention here. The convention says that the potential energy at infinite infinity is zero. And uh, I mean I mean to say that if your charge is here or your system is your system of charges is here, take a sphere of uh, radius infinity from this charge or system of charges. It really doesn't matter because anyway the radius is infinity. If you take a sphere like this uh, of radius infinity, on all the points on this sphere, your potential energy is going to be zero. And that's what I mean by saying potential energy at infinity is zero. And now, as we follow this convention, let me define the definition of this uh, potential energy. It's nothing but the work done by the external force in bringing the charge from infinity to the point we are dealing with and uh, this this definition is because anyway we are taking the potential energy at infinity to be zero so this definition holds um, because it is the change in potential energy that we are considered about uh, that we are consider that we are considering uh, and uh, at infinity the energy is zero so the potential energy is this and let me not forget to mention it again it's not enough if you just bring the charge it should be brought very very slowly without any acceleration that should be infinitesimally slow electrostatic potential it is the work done by external force in bringing a unit positive charge from two points say r to p uh, r to p now as i said the work done by the external force would be this thing into dr integrated now i want to bring it from infinity to a point which is at a distance r from my say there's a point charge here q which is sufficiently larger and uh, i want to calculate its potential here uh, at a point which is at a distance r from the charge q so i have to bring it from infinity the the force at every point uh, which is at a distance say r dash the force would be for electrical force would be uh, k q and uh, small q which is nothing but one i said it is a unit charge unit positive charge by r dash square and uh, dr and this is the electrical force but the external force would be the negative of this so i want to bring it from infinity to uh, this point uh, which is at a distance r uh, just integrate it it's not a big deal finally you will get uh, the uh, change or the the work done to be k q by r and the q is uh, 1 so which is uh, this is this is the electrostatic potential at this point which is at a distance r from the charge and this is denoted by v and uh, note that this is the potential for uh, for uh, the or i should say this is the potential due to the point charge and uh, if you are dealing with system of charges and some other configurations then the potential would be different uh, this would be the potential due to point charge and uh, just note that this is very sim very much similar to the electric field at a point which is at a distance r from the point charge just the denominator is different in electric field you get r square here you have r and uh, everything else is same and i think i'm done that's it for today bye in the next video i'll tell you 
how to calculate the electric potential or potential energy when you have the system of charges or electric dipoles and some stuff like that uh, keep watching